Good day everyone! Welcome to this year's Mathematical Investigation and Final Defense Facebook Live Premiere with the theme Mathematics for a Better World. Mathematical Investigation has been a part of Valmasai's project to hone and nurture young minds for us students to have a deeper understanding and appreciation of mathematics. To give us some tips on how to make a mathematical investigation, here's Craig Daniel Nito, Mathematics Club Treasurer, and Jerson Polo Gayagaya, Mathematics Club Public Information Officer. Good day, Palmasa community. I'm Craig Daniel Nito. And I am Jerson Gayagaya. And today, we are here to share our experiences and knowledge on how to conduct a mathematical investigation. Are you ready to dive deep into the world of mathematics? This is an adventure that we are going to take and we hope that you will learn something new from it. With that being said, let us unravel what you are about to unfold. Mathematics is a greatly underrated topic. Basically, it has no limits to the topic. It's a very wide, open-ended topic and it is where the investigators come. Many topics waiting to be discovered and unravel. It is very exciting and wonderful. With that being said, let us start our topic from a quote of Rhonda of 2010. He said that mathematical investigations are open-ended, meaning that this thing distinguishes itself from problem solving itself. They often do not have a single solution, a single proof, or even a single answer. This can be approached by the investigators in many different ways. This can also be approached with varying solutions and varying processes and proofs, thus making it open-ended. Very well said, Craig. Furthermore, according to Venus, some examples of these for applications towards real life are making models for traffic and monitoring the current pandemic. Now, let us identify the steps of how you can make a mathematical investigation. Let us start with our first step, finding a good problem. Our first quality, the new quality. When you say new, we need to have an original or an innovative idea, meaning that the idea was inspired from an already pre-existing topic. We are investigating for a reason, and it would be repetitive and redundant if we were to a topic about an already pre-made one. The second quality, the doable quality, tells us that our problem should be doable for us investigators, meaning that the problem shouldn't be too easy or too hard. Very hard problems may make the problem impossible and would not go well, whereas easier problems tend to not appeal to judges about the topic. Finally, the third quality, the interesting quality, an interesting topic would attract a large variety of people to show interest to your work. It would also appeal to investigators needing same ideas from your topic. A easier way to make an innovative topic is that it will later from an already done topic or maybe try something local. Some problems that we experience that we think may also be the other fun. Let us now talk about our second step our experimentation and solution-making step. This is a very vital step in order to solve your problem. Since a mathematical investigation is open-ended, any applicable solution can be used as long as it can make the problem move forward. This is where experimentation comes in. Experimentation is the act of trial and error where we can assess which solutions and proofs are important and which are not useful for our problem. Let us start with pattern finding. What is pattern finding, Gerson? Pattern finding is a matter of finding the same patterns in terms of pieces, shapes, details, or any piece Finding any piece may be helpful in the case of objective, as it is with some hypothetical question that will be answered by the result to verify our subjective state of order. Here is an example of pattern finding. Take an example, the pattern starts with a green square 
then the red rectangle followed by the orange and the blue rectangle. After that, we go back to the green screen and start the pattern again. Check out in this example, we need to find the next figure after the green rectangle. If we continue the pattern, what will be the next figure? The answer is the red rectangle. With this in mind, we can make conjectures about this. Great, can you show us what is a conjecture? Alright, let's show the audience what a conjecture is. Conjectures are mathematical statements that are not yet proven. These are assumptions made by the investigators, similarly with the hypothesis, in scientific research. Conjectures are often single-sentence assumptions, just pointing up whether the statement will be true or false. Here are examples of a conjecture. This conjecture is from a study last school year. Notice how short the conjectures are? So, in making a conjecture, it must be as short as possible. I'm pretty sure that you know some theorems are postulates. Your conjectures must be almost similar to the patterns of words in the known theorems. Some assumptions or conjectures can be made with mathematical inductions, which are used to prove a rule is true for an integer problem. It usually has two steps, providing the first value, then proceeding to have an assumption for a certain variable and proving it. In this example, notice that the first step is to check if the rule is true for 1. Then, we will assume that it is true for all integers k. To prove that it is true, Let's try to substitute n is equal to k plus 1. Using the laws of exponent, we can verify that it is true. Therefore, all integers n satisfy the rule. Next is experimenting, which is used in experimental and theoretical probability. One example is finding the experimental probability that the sum when the dice is rolled is even or odd. I'd say we covered some topics about this. Why not? Let's move on to the next step. And hopefully, we'll find something on which data are you willing to take to the journey on making a mathematical investigation? Of course, this investigation wouldn't be complete without any paper written about it, right, your son? Oh, yes, of course. Our final step is to discuss the parts of the paper. To present your work, you will need a complete paper of your mathematical investigation. Let us start with the introduction. This contains the background and the purpose of the problem. This establishes the context of our investigation being conducted by summarizing current understanding and background information about the topic, stating the purpose of the work in the form of the conjectures and our problem. Here is an example of it from an investigation paper. In this example, the background of the Fibonacci numbers are discussed. Also, the introduction gives us some insights of the observation of the investigators in their selected problem. After the introduction, we have the conjecture. A conjecture is a mathematical statement that has not yet been written. The conjecture is right, but we are not in the plot in any case. However, because a pattern holds for many cases, does that mean that the pattern will hold for many cases? The conjecture should be true for the only mathematical observation is accepted. When a conjecture is true, it becomes a true. An example of a conjecture is a conjecture. After a conjecture, we have to verify the conjecture in order to prove whether it is true or not. This part contains the proof and the solution needed in order to solve the problem and prove the conjecture to be true or false. When the conjecture is proved to be false, we may want to make a new conjecture in order to solve the given problem. When the conjecture is verified, justification comes in. Justification is the validity of your solutions from your verifications. It is a process that is both individual and social in determining mathematical validity and developing mathematical understandings. It also contains arguments that solidify the proof. 
To justify a solution, students will need to be able to use appropriate mathematical language to give reasons for the particular approach used to solve a problem. Investigators may need to explain this orally to the people who want to know more about it. Here is an example of a justification. Notice that we use mathematical terms such as the Binet's formula and the Golden Ratio. As said earlier, we need to use appropriate mathematical language. The summary and the reference. The summary includes everything that we can short in precise math. Everything the paper has talked about and has a certain critique about the problem. We did the action to the problem. The references are the bigger pieces of the investigator. We give credit and acknowledge the creator. Finally, the abstract. This is a part of the paper where well, it's all about a brief and concise summary of the paper. It includes an overview of the overall purpose of the study, the basic design of your problem, and your findings on the investigation. Here is an example of an abstract from an investigation paper last year. Notice that the abstract is short. The words in abstract must not exceed 200 or 300 words. Also, abstract will give some insights on what the whole paper is all about. It must be appealing as the title, because abstract is the first part of the paper that the readers will see. If it is not appealing, then the readers might not continue to read the whole paper. And that concludes our discussion for today. We hope you had fun with our adventure today. Before we end, I would like to showcase some examples of mathematical investigations from previous years. Examples for number theory. We have 4-digit numbers for reversing and subtracting, an investigation to find an ultimate method for the visibility rule of 17, an investigation with relevance to the behavior of 4-digit palindrome numbers, patterns from the combination of distinct integers, Analyzing properties and behavior of the product of consecutive integers. For number th from game theory, game theory on enhanced dots and boxes, magic square, a study about generalizing method formulation, game theory on tic tac penny. For geometry, computing the perimeter of a right triangle given its hypotenuse and area. The new set of arithmetic rules for the numbers of dots in an overlapping polygon, featuring other special properties. Thank you for listening. We hope to see some brilliant and interesting topics arise from the smart and intelligent students of the Valmasai community. Last January 18, 2021, we've conducted an event to learn and evaluate how far we've come in terms of mathematical investigation. Now, let's unearth and unravel the world of discovery as Valmasai pilots the Philippines' first high school mathematical investigation conference to be judged by Dr. Ian June Garces. Of course, this event wouldn't have been possible without the initiative of our mathematics coordinator. So, let me call on Mr. Augusto B. Logroño to give us a welcoming remark. Uh, while waiting for Sir James, our dedicated and beloved Division Math Coordinator, Ma Marilyn Soriano, good afternoon po. Thank you for your presence po. Uh, to our very respectable and highly competent guest, Dr. Garces, good afternoon po. Okay. To the math enthusiasts of Almasai, my co-teachers, and to our participants for the mathematical investigations, our finalists, uh, a pleasant and a blessed day to all. Okay? So truly this event deserves a celebration, for after more than one year of waiting, we now arrive at its final destination, mm -hmm. the final defense. Teachers and students have worked enough, and actually more than enough, to come up with this first experiment. Our first trial will be evaluated by no other than the highly recommended and loved by math teachers because of his expertise in mathematics. The, respect, uh, the very respectable Dr. Ian Garces, 
thank you po uh, Doc for uh, allowing us to uh, to uh, to uh, to conduct this uh, mathema- defense mathematical uh, investigation defense so maraming maraming salamat po Our effort to uplift the math education of our school is our drive in conducting this event. Teachers have, tri- have tried their very best to help the students produce the so-called MI. Uh, and we are thankful to the students that they never stop to try and try after some revisions. Actually, we are hesitant to do this because we teachers have never experienced it before, even during our college days. But because of the passion and willingness to learn, we try. In this day, this is not only a validation of students' work, but also the work of the teachers. And we are very glad that we have one who will help us to validate our work. So to all my students and my co-teachers, always remember that mathematics may not teach us to add love or subtract hate, but it gives us hope that every problem has a solution. With this, I would like to welcome you all in our first mathematical investigation conference come with final defense. Good afternoon po. Thank you very much, Mr. Lagrania. And now to give us an inspirational message, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our ever-supportive Division Mathematics Coordinator, Ms. Marilyn B. Soriano. To buy my ever-supportive school head, Mr. Aime S. Rivera, Mathematics Coordinator, Mr. Augusto de Bruno, and to our special guest from Ateneo de Manila University, who is always ready to share his expertise, Dr. Ian Garces, teachers, students, good afternoon. It is my privilege and I'm glad to witness this very first mathematical investigation activity in our division. My first encounter to MI was through a training sponsored by MTAP. And of course, the trainer was the MI expert, Dr. Garces. Then, Valmasai was lucky for being included among the three schools who were given a direct student training by again the man of MI. Wow, ang saya ng mga participants. Sana meron pa ulit mga ganong mga activities. After more or less a decade, a Valmasai math enthusiast without any formal training together with his Chinese partner joined an Intel MI competition and won a silver award but the said portion The credit was not the said portion the credit was not for Philippine instead it was given to China Sana magkaroon na rin ng international MI winner ang Balmasai na dala ang pangalan ng Pilipinas I am now hoping that the activity will be the beginning of more productive and successful endeavor for MI events in our order to produce international winners Mangarap kayo mga bata dahil nasa inyo ang mahaba pang panahon at pagkakataon upang magtagumpay. Anyway, it's all free to dream high but it needs hard work. Congratulations and thank you Balmasai. More power with your future MI activities. To our MI expert, Dr. Garces, thank you so much sir for being with us and sharing your expertise expertise beyond any world. We we are very happy to be with you po throughout our MI journey. Maraming salamat. To acknowledge the presence of our principal, Mr. Jaime Estevera, who will give us an inspirational message, let's give him a big virtual hand. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, first and foremost, allow me to greet our guest, uh, Dr. Ian June Garces. Good afternoon, sir. Alam niyo po sir, uh, when I was still a teacher here in Balmasay, uh, way back siguro mga 2014, 2013, at alas kong ako kayo nare-earnate from our uh, supervisor, uh, Ma'am Marilyn Soriano, as well as from Sir Logroño. So we don't have yet personal encounter, but I do um, admire you for your passion to this particular endeavor. 
So to all our learners, to our teachers, again, good afternoon to all of you. Sabi nila, no, mathematics may not teach us how to add love or minus hate, but it gives us every reason to hope that every problem has a solution. I'm so happy that despite of the current situation, we have this uh, particular activity for our learners for them to con continuously improve their skills in mathematics. I would like to thank personally our teachers pro both from the junior and senior high school departments for providing us relevant activities. Alam niyo itong mathematics in mathematical investigation, this is something new ano, sa akin. Ano. And I'm, I am so curious about this kasi with this, uh, hindi, na lang, hindi lang science ang magkakaroon investigative project making but as well as mathematics department. Alam niyo, I, I, you will allow me to share sa amin kasi mga science teachers uh, common sa aming research uh, program yung paggamit talaga ng mathematics uh, indeed mathematics is the language of science so it's good that we have a good start ano, uh, for our learners having this mathematical investigation siguro isa ito sa aabangan na every year as we have uh, I mean the conduct of mathematics month uh, parang kumbaga kung merong science investigatory project tayo na consider na parang prime among all those activities that we have uh, of course itong mathematical investigation will be one ano, of those uh, exciting activities every year so I would like to thank all our teachers as well as the, uh, the officers ng ating mathematics club for letting us have this uh, relevant activity um, as I have said, math is an essential subject in our lives and it is good to know that each one of you has the desire to improve your skills through relevant activities like this. Uh, sa ngayon, alam nyo, ang call lagi sa, sa ating mga educators ay yung ating curriculum gawin natin uh, parang kumbaga, not just like progressive kundi re reconstructive and the thing, ano, na wherein learners are uh, while studying, ano, yung mga learners, yung kanilang Yung kanilang pag-aaral, kumbaga kinoconsider nila that that is life. Diba sabi nga ni, ni, uh, ni John Dewey, sabi, we are not actually preparing learners for their future. We are actually preparing them for the current situation that we have because education is life. So I would like to thank each one of you, <coughs> particularly lahat ng participants natin for this activity. To all the teachers who guided them in order for them to finish you know, one particular uh, MI project. You know. And as I've said kanina, curious ako rito, I wanted to see also the setup. I wanted to see, uh, to check also how this differ from science investigative project. But the common thing about this, this thing, uh, just like investigatory project, a main purpose is to provide solution to one particular problem. With that, magiging relevant kayo na siguro future functional member of the society kasi at young age ninyo, meron kayong mga nagagawa na contribution to our community, especially uh, in, in the field of mathematics. So, good luck. Para sa akin, panalo kayo lahat. Ano? Nakita ko na nakadisplay yung mga projects na yan before the pandemic. And na uh, pag binabasa ko siya, to sabi nga, no, sab, sa, dal, good dal, start pa lang natin ito. Of course, hindi yan perfect. Pero because of the guidance of Dr. Garces, unti-unti, palmas I will be known for this particular activity. So, again, good afternoon at God bless sa inyong lahat. Ingat po tayo lagi. Thank you very much, Sir James. At this point, our conference is getting closer. So, to further excite all of you, may I call on Mr. Kim Anthony Frondazo, Grade 8 Mathematics teacher, to introduce our judge. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Hi, so we are blessed and honored to have our judge for today we send experts in the field of mathematics to join us today in this momentous event. He is one of the brightest and top experts in the field of mathematics. He finished his doctorate degree in mathematics at Ateneo de Manila University, a coach of the Philippine team in various international mathematics competitions, author and writer of different mathematics books. He is the associate professor in the Department of Mathematics at Ateneo de Manila University. Let us give our virtual clap to Dr. Ian June L. Garces. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon po. Good afternoon po. Good afternoon po. Good afternoon po. 
Okay. So, marami tayong natutunan ngayon, o di ba? Pwede naman pala tayo magkita-kita dito kahit hindi tayo pupunta sa isang lugar eh. So, mahirap man, pero nangyayari. Di ba? So, sabi ko nga sa inyo eh, pero bang kahit mahirap, meron talagang paraan mangyayari. So, in fact, um, uh, just an example, meron kaming ginagawang research sa aking mga former na PhD students. Nahihirapan kami dati kasi hindi kami magkita-kita. Kasi nga, yung isa, nasa, nasa Isabela na, doon siya nagtuturo. Tapos yung isa naman, dito lang naman sa Manila. Tapos hindi kami magkatagpo, takbong, tak, uh, talaga kami, mag, as in, email-email lang. Pero there are times, sir, in, um, when you, when you, hindi mo siya ma, hindi mo ma, as, as in, hindi mo mapaliwanag sa email lang. Yung tipo bang gano'n, ah. So, dahil sa pandemic na to natutunan na pwede pala mag-zoom. So, mas lalo kami tuloy na nag-meet. Kasi palagi kaming, uh, nag-meet kami every Sunday. So, ibig sabihin pala, masama man nga nangyari ngayon na walang, walang pasok at saka delikado lumabas. Although, alam ko, lumalabas kayo. Ah... Uh, <laughs> Meron ding advantage uh, na merong mga bagay dati na hindi nagagawa na magagawa pa lang. Oh, sino bang sino bang may mag-aakala na mga teachers pa lang ngayon marunong na pa lang mag-vlog vlog. <laughs> so anyway, uh, anyway, um, I am happy. Thank you for inviting me. Nangyari't nangyari na rin. Uh, I'm happy that uh, sorry pero balmasay pa rin ang tawag ko sa inyo although medyo ano na nga ba yung ano nyo 1 kilometer name uh, basta ganoon kahaba-haba okay so balmasay pa rin yung dati-dati pa okay yun pa rin yung naisip ko palagi sa balmasay so I'm happy that you have um, you have ventured into mathematical investigation It's not it's not the end actually it's not the end but it's a, it's a start it's actually a good start um parang ano lang yan parang lang ano hindi mo malalaman ang isang bagay pag hindi ka hindi mo siya gagawin okay. um medyo magulo sa umpisa uh, medyo dirty hands sa umpisa pero Later, maging malinis na rin yan. Malilinis na rin. Alam, malalamat, malalaman nyo na rin kung paano ang... Ano yung... Tawag nito. Ano yung kampante sa inyo. So, um, I have been introducing, uh, as, as Ma Marilyn said, um, I have been uh, advocating math, math investigation into the curriculum because technically siya yung kailangan. Okay? Now, yung math investigation is one of the five major uh, five major skills na dapat at the end at the end ng at the end ng a basic education ng bata mahukuha niya. Tatlo doon Uh, that's math investigation is one. Problem solving is another. And the other now is the modern one. Okay. Nakikita nyo na ata ngayon ito na napaka-importante pala nito. Which is mathematical modeling. Okay. I think you have heard about this a lot. Um, kaya lang, um, as we progress, as we, uh, as, 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 As we progress in math, kailangan din ng medyo hindi talaga kaagad na ganito na full-blown, let's say, full-blown um, mathematical research. Hindi ganon. Dadaan yun sa simpleng bagay. For example, mathematical research, actually, ang forerunner niya sa basic education ay mathematical investigation. So, this is a good start. Um, 
your math investigatory projects may not be as difficult as you think. Pero don't talaga magumpisa. Don't talaga magumpisa. I will say more. I will say more on the mathematical investigation side. Pagdating uh, pagkatapos ng presentation. Okay, pagkatapos ng presentations. Um, so that hindi kayo ma halimbawa magsalita na ako tapos may sasabihin ako baka baka yung magpresent mamaya hindi na magpresent ayoko na wala tayo noon <laughs> wala yun na ay, ay, ayoko na wala na tayo doon back out na tayo <laughs> so hindi mo na ako magsasalita tapos i-point uh, as what um as what, uh, as what uh, Pasensya na, pero August ang tawag ko sa kanya. As what Sir August said, uh, uh, kailangan daw mag-feedback mag -feedback ako para for the teachers as well, for, for the future projects, pero hindi mo na ako magsalita. Later na ako magsalita about... Uh, tapos, I will just cite some examples sa nangyari, sa nangyari, sa mangyayari ngayon. So, I'll stop in here. Sana, you just enjoy. You just enjoy. Um, ganun talaga yon sa umpisa. Medyo magulo. Medyo madugo. Medyo hindi na pa. Nga pa. Hayaan mo. Ganun talaga yon. Okay. Wala namang, wala namang masaya sa umpisa. Malu, malu, malungkot man palagi. Okay. So, hayaan nyo. Sige. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much, Mr. Frendoza and Dr. Garces for a very informative and heartwarming message. Without further ado, let's proceed to our first presenter. Let's start off with group number one with a paper entitled, Patterns from Combinations of Distinct Integers. So, good afternoon everyone. I'm Limal Bihamara and together with Gloria Grande, Guayco Lopez, Montemayor, Pascua, Sacristan, Sayanko, Tapia, and Valdez, we are students from 10 Maxwell, former students of 10 Maxwell, and we, I'm here to present to you our mathematical investigation entitled Patterns from Combinations of Distinct Integers. So introduction for patterns from combinations of distinct integers. This study is concerned uh, in manipulating sets of four digits, including the combination of two digits, and in some cases, the combination of three digits that can be formed. Uh, on our study, the set of four dig digits should be distinct. That means different numbers and also be positive integers, which are sometimes called counting numbers or natural numbers. Our main focus of the study is to explore patterns of two digits or three digits manipulated from a given four digit numbers. And this study aims to explore different patterns that when a four distinct numbers are combined to make different two digits or three digit numbers and when using operations like addition and division it will just show a result so we have conjectures here so our first conjecture if the sum of all possible distinct two digit numbers from the given four different non-negative non-zero integers a b c and d is divided to the sum of that set the quotient will always be 33 Next is if a single in the element in four different non-negative integers a, b, c, d is zero, thus the sum of all possible distinct two-digit numbers x, y, where x is not equal to zero from that set is divided to the sum of the set. The quotient will always be 32. And last conjecture, the summation of all possible distinct three-digit numbers from given four-digit non-negative non-zero integer a, b, c, d divided into the sum of that set will always result to the same quotient of 666. So we, I will explain to you the conject, our first conjecture that states that if the sum of all possible distinct two-digit numbers from a given four different non-negative non-zero integer a, b, c, d is divided to the sum of the set, the always quotient will always be 33. So I have here an example. Let's say an example, the set of four distinct numbers is 1, 2, 3, and 4. 
So the first step is let the summation of all possible distinct two-digit two numbers be the first equation. So from the given set, we can make combinations 12, 13, 14, 21 until 43 that arrive that we have arrived the sum of 330, which is our equation one. For the next step, let the summation of all single elements in four different non-negative integers be the equation 2. So since the set is composed of 1, 2, 3, and 4, we will add those single elements in 3 plus 4. And it will result to 10, which is our equation 2. Then when we divide the equation 1 from to equation 2, we, have, we will yield the same answer, which is 33. It applies to all possible values since it but it will it need to follow the rule of our investigation thank you very much group number one to continue our conference let's have group number two with a paper entitled analyzing the properties and behavior of the product of consecutive integers good afternoon everyone i'm eugene de Cruz, and i'm here to present our group's mathematical investigation titled analyzing the properties and behavior of the product of consecutive integers Study conducted by the researchers Marina Pacayan, Valerie Daniel Alcantara, German James Aldaya, Sarah Kirsten Cabral, Maria Cassandra Carapel, Grace Teguia, Mark Sanko, Aaron Isaac Manuel, Randy Tritoneta, Samantha Sedavia, John Rainer Valencia, and me, Eugene De Rons. For the introduction of the study, let's first identify the two main classification of numbers used in the study. First are consecutive numbers. Consecutive numbers are a sequence of numbers that are arranged in a continuously increasing order. It is a very important concept in the field of mathematics and also very evident in our everyday lives. In the second classification are the composite numbers. In mathematical terms, composite numbers are whole numbers that have more than two factors. Any non-prime positive integer except one are composite numbers. This study focuses on the concept of multiplying consecutive increasing integers to each other and adding any constant to the product, and the sum should be a composite number. However, this is not always the case. Take for example the numbers 5, 6, and 7. The product of these numbers is 210. Then adding a random constant, let's say this constant is 1, then the sum would be 211. Since 211 is a prime number, then it is then it is not a composite number. There are a lot of possible counterexamples for this topic, but only those that result to a composite number will be included in this paper and will be used to create conjectures. The goal of this study is to analyze the properties of the sum of a constant and the part of a number of consecutive integers, or can be written as a plus n multiplied by the quantity n plus 1 multiplied by the quantity n plus 2, multiplied by the quantity n plus 3, until the quantity n plus k minus 1, where a is the constant added, n is the smallest of the consecutive integers, and k is the number of consecutive integers. From the experiments conducted on the expression shown previously, three conjectures were derived. The three derived conjectures are as shown. Let's discuss these one by one. The first conjecture states that the sum of negative 2 and the product of two consecutive integers is divisible by the third integer. First, choose two consecutive integers. Then, multiply these two integers. Add negative 2 to the product. From conjecture 1, the sum should be divisible by the third integer of the two consecutive integers. For example, the two consecutive integers chosen are 5 and 6. The product of these numbers is 30, and then add negative 2. The sum will be 20. Since the two consecutive integers are 5 and 6, the third integer is 7, and 28 is in fact divisible by 7. More examples for this conjecture are shown in this table. For this conjecture, mathematical induction was used to prove the created conjecture. Let n be the chosen integer, n plus 1 the second integer, and n plus 2 the third integer. The product of the two consecutive integers is n times the quantity n plus 1, then add negative 2. By simplifying this expression, you will get n squared plus n minus 2. 
the simplified expression could then be factored into the quantity n plus t multiplied by the quantity n minus 1. Since n plus 2 is proven to be a factor of the expression, therefore the conjecture is proven to be true. What a great presentation, group 2! Let's bring it all out with the presentation of group 3. Let's have the presenter of the paper entitled Game Theory on Dots and Boxes. Good afternoon to everyone present in here in our Zoom meeting today. Good afternoon to Sir Garces, who being with us today despite of the pandemic. Good afternoon, sir. And before everything else, I would like to introduce our topic first. Game Theory of Enhanced Dots and Boxes. And maybe, may I introduce myself? Uh, my name is Ryan Andrar Labrador, former grade 9 student and now grade 10. And I would also like to introduce the publishers, the authors of this mathemat mathematical investigation who worked very hard to accomplish this um, investigation. Bianca Margaret Salazar, Ariel Angeles, Jay Bescania, Pete Datal, Maria Angelica de Lesmo, Hannah de Lima, Arvin Dizon, Janela Esteban, Lawrence Isabel Pagellan, Charlene Centillas, and John Lloyd Unida. And I would also like to mention the four people that are uh, with me today for, for the presentation of this event. Bianca Salazar, Lawrence Pagellan, Maria Angelica de Lesmo, and John Lloyd Donida. Mathematics deals with a lot of things, from the simple things that you do on your home, the choices that you do, to the large works uh, from companies that you do. Ever since the recorded history begins, the discovery of mathematics has been forefoot of every civilized society. The needs of math rises based on the wants of the society. And because of the development of mathematics, every society and every civilized society has developed the technology in which we are using nowadays. In this investigation, we will give emphasis to the concept of the game theory. Game theory involves a lot of uh, different strategies and it is particularly the study between the interactions of individuals that involve strategic decision making. The interaction involved in game theory is called a game and the parties involved in the game are what we call players who, are, who can be individuals or groups. A rational player is the one who makes decisions based on what will give themselves the greatest benefit. And as we, as we play a game, we have the main goal. It is to win and defeat uh, the enemy. So game theory would be much helpful for them. And of course, as we use game theory, it involves different strategies in order to secure victory upon playing the game. Some of these strategies, as we gave it to you, are Minimax strategy, Green Trigger strategy, and Maximin strategy. Minimax strategy is a decision rule used to minimize the worst case potential loss. So every player does this to avoid the uh, the acquiring of tickets on playing in the game. Maximum strategy picks out the decision that yields the smallest loss. And this is uh, and this strategy can also be seen on playing chess as you think what uh, what uh, what would you move in order to not get eaten or not for your officials to be lost in the game. And the last is green trigger strategy. A player using green trigger strategy will cooperate, but as soon as the opponent defects, the trigger will defect the remainder of the game. And to further uh, enhance and explain the concept of game theory, we have chosen the game Dots and Boxes as an application for it. Dots and Boxes is a pencil and paper game developed by Edward Lucas, and it is also called as La 
60 coquitos. In our game, it starts with an empty grid of box, but we are going to use a 5x5 grid of dots. And of course, in every game, there is a game mechanic. The game mechanic for our game would be there would there would be two to three players that would be involved in this game. And the only rule in the game is that the player should form a square using the same color of the sides of their, the same color of sides of their choice. And the player can use horizontal, vertical, and diagonal lines without any restriction. And also the player can create a square, a square with any orientation and dimension. Upon creating our mathematical investigation, we have concluded three conjectures in order to support our mathematical investigation. Our first conjecture is any of the players will not be able to form a one by one square. Second conjecture, the maximum number of squares a player can create within the board is seven. And for our third conjecture, the least number of moves to secure a win in the next turn is one four. In this case, whenever a player is Whenever a player tries to create a one by one square, the player might be blocked by the other two play players to him from winning, just like what I said a while ago. And this game also shows the concept of speed for that, wherein a blocked player would engage and block other players. And we can see this also from the game tree that we have created on the left. What an excellent job! Let's max it out with a presentation of Group 4 with a paper entitled Four Digit Numbers Through Reversing and Subtracting. Hello. Uh, a pleasant afternoon to our judge, Mr. Garces, and math, math teachers and coordinators, and uh, fellow students who are participating in this Zoom meeting. Uh, a pleasant afternoon to all of you. Your presence is very much appreciated. Uh, my name is John Matthew Entera, and I will. It is my utmost pleasure and honor to present our uh, our study entitled Four Digit Numbers to Reversing and Subtracting," uh, uh, conspired by uh, the former students of Ten Maxwell, namely Calma, Conanan, Cruz, Del Rosario, Catela, Garcia, Guillego, Ong, Tagalag, Yero, and yours truly, Entera. For introduction, the main focus of this investigation is to provide learners with techniques about four-digit numbers and the rule of divisibility. The topic's process involves subtracting four-digit numbers to its reverse and repeatedly subtracting the absolute value of the difference again to its reverse. In this way, students are to think outside the box and may help to encourage curiosity and develop a system of asking questions, gathering information, analyzing problems, and justifying answers. Rather than utilizing two to three digit numbers that are commonly used, the investigators thought of manipulating four digit numbers that are rarely utilized. Subtraction and addition are the main basic operations of play in the set investigation. In the process of manipulating four digit numbers, it leads to different conjectures which are then analyzed and verified. Here are our conjectures of the study. Uh, the first conjecture is that four-digit numbers, when subtracted repeatedly with the reversals, will eventually reach zero. And our second conjecture is, given a four-digit number A, B, C, D, where A, B, C, D are distinct numbers, A and C are the odd-place digits, and B and D are the even-place digits. If the absolute value of the difference of D and A is equal to 5, regardless if the sum of the odd-place digits is equal to the sum of the even-place digits, it will eventually reach zero. And for our last conjecture, conjecture number three, four digit numbers that make a loop in the operation are divisible by 11. For our first conjecture, four digit numbers when subtracted repeatedly with the reversals will eventually reach zero. Here are verification. When the sum of odd base digits, such as the thousands and tens digit, um, in, the, in the term A, B, C, D, we can say this as the letters A and C, 
is not equal to the sum of the even place digits such as the hundreds and the ones digits, uh, the BND, the four digit numbers subtracted to its reverse and repeatedly subtracting the absolute value of the difference subtracted to its reverse will eventually reach a final difference of zero. This is based from our observations and examples. Uh, so let the thousands digits be A, hundreds digits be B, tens digit be C, and the ones digit be D. Now, we, we will write the four digit number A, B, C, D such that A plus C, the sum of A and C, is not equal to B and D. For example, here we have the four digit number 4,896. 4, uh, the A is 4, B is, B is 8, C is 9, and D is 6. Now, if we look at the four digit number, four, A plus C, 4 plus 9, is the sum is 13, is not equal to the sum of B and D, namely 8 plus 6, which is 14. Now to rearrange the digits of the four digit number such that we, uh, such that we can such that we get the uh, the reverse namely 6,984 minus 4,896 equal to 2,088. Now repeat the process we get 6,714 and so and so on until we get to the number 5,994. Now 5,994 when reverse gives a uh, four digit number 4995 which when subtracting from each other will yield a difference of 999 999 is what we know as a palindromic number which means uh, whatever orientation whether it be left to right or right to left it will be the same number therefore 999 minus it reverse which is also 999 is equal to zero thank you for delivering your paper nice and clear and of course our last but not the least, may I call on the presenter of Group 5 with a paper entitled Game Theory on Tic Tac Penny. You may now start presenting. Good afternoon everyone, I'm Gabriel Adrian Cruz and I will be your presenter for the Game Theory in Tic Tac Penny. The group members are Cruz, Addison, Aguilar, Cornejo, De La Cruz, Pelarino, Francisco, Padron, Palabon, Ramos, Santos, and Seawan. So, first of all, what is game theory? Game theory is basically the process of forming different strategies based on a given set of rules. This can be applied not just in games, but also in psychology, biology, war, politics, economics, and business. Now, you might be familiar to the to the name of our game, Tic Tac Penny, because it we got this idea from a famous game that most of us know, Tic Tac Toe. So, just an overview on the game Tic Tac Toe. Tic Tac Toe is a game wherein we have a three by three grid and in which it has two players that will take turns in putting their marks. It's either X or O's, and the winner will be determined. To if if someone makes a a line, it's either diagonally, horizontally, or vertically. Now, here here are the terminologies and concepts that we use for the for the conjectures. First is Nash equilibrium. Nash equilibrium is a decision-making theorem wherein we are sticking to just a certain strategy, so we can achieve a desired outcome. Next is tit for tat. It, it is a game theory strategy in which, after a a round, a a participant mimics or copies the the action or movements of their opponent. Next is minimax and maximin strategy. Minimax is minimizing the loss and maximizing the profit, while maximin strategy is bringing down the risk levels by reducing the number of possibilities in a game therefore reduce reducing the possibility of losing and increasing the chances of winning now dominant strategy dominant strategy is a strategy which provides the greatest payoff in a game next is game trees game trees are just like normal trees in just from just one scenario it can expand to different branches of scenarios based on the different decisions that 
you made. Now for the mechanics of the Tic Tac Penny. We have two phases. The first phase is placement. So here, as you can see in the screen, we have the board wherein we could play the game. These lines represent the pathways that our chips could move. Now, for the rule 1.1, the pl players will take turns in putting their marks in empty points. Rule 1.2, when a player places a chip where he could already win if he succeeds on his next move, the opponent should block that path. So, what do we mean by that? So, here, an example, here in the first picture, the first player puts his the first player puts his mark in the center. And the, and the second player, here in the second picture, puts his chip in the right edge. And the next move of the first player, here in the third picture, he moves his third, second chip in the upper right corner. Now, if you would observe this third picture, in the next set of moves, the first player could could put his his chip in here therefore he would already win the game since he, he forms a 3 by 1 diagonal line so i thought of this rule so that we can go to the next phase of our game so whenever we see a scenario like this the the opposing player should place his or her chip in there phase two of our game in the phase two this is where we move our the pieces that we placed a while ago now after they put three chips each the players are allowed to move their chips throughout the pathway but they can add more chips Rule 2.2, just like in the regular tic-tac-toe, the, we can determine the winner if he, he or she forms a 3 by one line. It's either a cross, diagonally, or down. So, from for the different conjectures that we found, we experimented in a sample of 100 games per conjecture to verify each. Now, here are the three conjectures that we found. The first one states that the minimum number of moves where the first player can win after the placement of the points is one move. And the second conjecture states that the minimum number of moves where the second player can win after the placement of coins is one move. And the third conjecture states that there is a situation wherein the game never ends. So, this the first conjecture is the conjecture that I'll be presenting to you. It states that the minimum number of moves where the first player can win after the placement of all the coins is one move. So it means that after the phase one of our game, you can already win the game in just one move. So here's an example of what I'm saying. We use different strategies that I mentioned a while ago, like Maximin, Minimax, and Nash Equilibrium. And I'll explain all this to you later in the justification. So in the verification, in the experiment we made, 20% of them after the placement already won the game, and 13% in just and 13 of them in just two moves, they already they also won the game. Now, here in the justification, we use the concept of maximum and minimax, just like I mentioned a while ago. We minimize our potential loss at the same time we maximize our potential gain. Now, so let's get back here. Here in the first picture, we can see that we can see that we place the if you if you were the first player you would place your chip in the center so why would i do that 
if you are the first player, you have three choices. It's either you put it in the center, the in an edge, or in a corner. If I if I would put that in the center, that would leave my opponent having only two choices. It's either an edge or a corner because I already occupied the center ones. So in in the second in the second photo, we we can see that our opponent placed his or her chip in that top right corner. So remember the the rule 1.2 that I mentioned a while ago. We can use that to force our opponent to make some decisions based on the rules. So if you can observe here in the third picture, when I put the when I put my mark when I put my mark here in the edge, it forces my opponent to put in here later. So that would mean we reduce the number of possible cases in the game. Now, you might think that there are a lot of possibilities in here. So why did I pick this spot? If you are going to put it in another spot, in comparison to this fourth picture, it would not it would not have the condition wherein I would be forced to put it in here. So if I were to do, do this third move, it would also reduce the number of possibilities in the next move, just like this one, where it forced me to put my last chip in here in the lower right corner. Now if at there, now the second player will only have four possible place for his third chip. So in this case, he placed it here in the lower left corner. Now, there are only four possible ways he can put that. It's either in here, which he did, in, here in the bottom ones, or in the top, top edge, or the low, upper left corner. Now, if he were to put it in here, here, and here, it would mean that we can already put this one up here in the in the face to up our game. Now, if he would, if he if the our opponent puts his chip in here instead of the other three in here, it would mean that we only have we need two moves instead of one to win the game. Vamasai students, thank you very much for bringing out your best today. Now. Let's hear from our guests some comments and suggestions. Um, may mga tanong lang ako, may mga tanong lang ako. Tapos later, sasabihin ko yung mga anong maganda, ano ang, ano ba yun? Sabihin ko na anong pangit. Kasi baka minsan sanasabi kasi nila na, huwag namang ganun sir. Huwag sabihin mo, o oh, sige hindi masyado maganda, ganun pa rin yun. Tabla tabla lang Parang sinat. Iniba mo lang salita eh. <laughs> Nowadays, we, also, we always accept, right? So, di ko bang, okay, ganun. Di, di ganun. Um, actually, I have read your, I have read your uh, written report. Uh, at saka, meron na akong mga nakikita. Okay. So, I will just start with, I will just start with uh, group number three. Yung, yung dots and boxes. Dots and boxes. Um, I know that there are two groups in here. Um, there are two groups in here going into game theory. Um, it seems that um, it seems that um, adhering to adhering to the idea that life is a game. So, mukhang mas gusto ngayon ang buhay na buhay na laro. Okay, so. Um, as long as there will be decision making, um, and there's a there's a chance of there's chances, then it will be it will be in what we call game theory. Now, um, 
you said something here um, here okay now when we say when we say justify when you say justify I understand that uh, this this thing is also this thing is also used in the the other the other paper game theory in tic tac toe at uh, tic tac penny when we say when we say justify we mean proof right because that is what we mean by justify if you pagsabihin ng teacher sa iyo sige ay justify mo nga yan hindi mo siya bibigyan ng wala ayo di ba bang malabo na explanation kailangan mathematically correct, mathematically precise, at saka um, yung walang walang butas ibig sabihin. No. right? So this is this is um, uh, this is a kind of this is a kind of technique wherein um, hindi mo masabi hindi mo masabi kung magawa ba o hindi the most that you can say is most probably hindi kasi did you understand my point did you understand my point when you prove when you prove a theorem hindi pwede na chance chance lang unless your theorem states that the the, the 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 probability of getting this in ganon is less than 30 percent okay then you have to prove why is that less than 30 percent pero but if you are claiming if you're claiming something that is so definite then hindi ka pwede magsasabi ng mga might baka uh hindi pwede yun. it's just the same way it's just the same way when your teacher may be proved the factor theorem hindi yung sinasabi na posible ang factor nito is ganito hindi pwede yun kailangan buo yung factor okay um when you're going to look at the i, I i'm very particular with the with the mathematics actually because a mathematical investigation is not a mathematical investigation if if there's no mathematics in it. Ito yung conjecture nyo. Uh, conjecture one, conjecture one. Conjecture one, ito. Okay. All for, your conjecture one says all four digit numbers when subtracted repeatedly with their reversals will eventually reach zero. You conjecture that one all. In fact, you justify that one next. Pero bakit sinasabi niyo na merong hindi nag hindi nag hindi nag zero naglulu? E bakit sinabi mo all four digit numbers when subtracted repeatedly with their reversals will eventually reach zero? And the sir, siguro ano? naglagay po kami ng parang uh, eh, naglagay po kami parang isa pa pong hiwalay po na justification na magpapakita po na may mga exceptions po. Kasi pero, po, po, pero you justify here. Tama yung sinabi mo, all na, one minus one na, na. Since, the, since the answer is zero, then it proves that most, tapos most ang na-prove mo, most, tapos bakit zero, ay most lang pala yun. Get some more? Yes, po, sir. At saka napaka-questionable itong proof na ito. Alam mo ba yun? Kasi, first, first is, mali yung conjecture. Um, well, well, conjecture naman kasi siya. So, ibig sabihin, conjecture, yes. Conjecture. Conjecture, eh. But you should have, you, sh you should have said something at the end that the conjecture is wrong. Correct. The conjecture is wrong. Pero I, I thought actually when 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 I read it at first, niko ah mali yung conjecture kasi sinasabi nyo nga may loop eh, naglulup di ba? Ah mali yung conjecture. 
Pero at the end, nung tininan ko, nag-justify kayo ni ko, ha? Pinro pa nila. Eh, masabi ba nila na hindi, may naglulup nga eh. Pero sinabi mo kasi all. If you say all, all. Lahat. Pero hindi. Pero justify nyo. Now look at the justification. Can you explain? Is this true? If you are going to reverse this, let's say for example, let's say for example, um, uh, ito, 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 ito. Six, three, six, three, uh, five, two, three, six. When you reverse this five, two, three, six, magiging six, three, two, five. Correct. Magiging one, zero, eight, nine. Correct. So yung one zero eight nine na ito, pag reverse mo yan, itong uh, nine eight zero one, reverse mo rin lang ito. Wo hindi kaya, for example, eighteen. I reverse mo yung eighteen. Ano eighteen is eighteen is eighteen is, 18 is uh, ten times one. Uh, uh, 10 times 1 plus 8. Pag i-reverse mo yon, 8 plus 10 plus 1 lang yun? 10 ay lang yun? Hindi kaya. Kasi ang ginawa mo dito, ni-reverse mo lang ito eh. Tama yung proof na yan. Parang ito, di ba, after this, tama ito na eh. Tama ito. This is correct. After this, you're going to reverse this. Tama? Pero, ni-reverse nyo lang yung digits niya. Ginawa mong 99A. Eh, of course, mag-zero yun. Kasi, binaliktad mo lang yung... Binaliktad mo lang ito. Ginawa mo dito. Ito. Binaliktad mo dito. Of course, mag-zero yun. Kasi, rearrangement lang yun ng numbers. Eh. You use that here as well. Yan, ni-reverse mo rin yan, ganun din. Of course, mag-zero. Kasi, pero that is not the reverse. Um, I'll go to, I'll go to um, uh, group one about the patterns in, patterns in, um, ito, ito, ito. Okay. I'll go directly to group one, uh, yung patterns. Um, Yung, again, let's look at the conjecture. Um, alam nyo, ang alam nyo, para, parang may duda tuloy ako. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> na merong isang powerful na tao na gumagawa nito na para bang inasa lang nila sa taong ito ang gumawa. Natakot yung ibang member siguro na i-correct. Kasi for example, this is so obvious. This is so obvious. If the sum of all, if the sum of all distinct two-digit numbers from the given four-digit numbers, non-negative, non non-zero. O di, bakit hindi na lang non-negative, non-zero? Di, positive na lang kaya, non-zero naman pala eh. Kasi integers din naman eh. So yung, yung idea ba ng itong grupo na to na non-negative tapos non-zero naman pala, di, uh, positive na. Tama? Sabi, if the sum of all is divided to the sum of A, B, C, D. Ha? Huh? Yan ba talaga ang inyong ibig niyong sabihin? Anyone from group 1? Is that what really, is that, is that the thing that you really meant to, for your conjecture 1? If the sum of all is divided to the sum of A, B, C, D. Sir. Yes. Ano ibig sabihin mo? Sinasabi lang po dyan na yung sum po mismo nung single elements na nakalawag po sa set. Yung A, B, C, D. Yung sum po mismo nung apat na yun pag okay. kinagad po. Saan ang sum ng A, B, C, D? Yung A plus B plus C plus D? Nasa Ah, uh, i-divide po siya doon sa sum nung 
combination rin po nung possible two digit distinct two digit numbers po. Can, 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 can we read again the statement? If the sum of all possible distinct two digit numbers is divided to the sum of A, B, C, D. Is that exactly what you meant? Uh, what we meant by that po is yung sum po nung every elements po. Yung elements sa A, sa B, sa C, sa C, sa D, yung summation lang po nun. Yun lang po yung meaning min uh, yung binibig sabihin po namin dun sa sum of A, B, C, D po. Yes, yes. Pag sabihin mo, for example, 25 divided by 5. Tama? Okay. Sinabi mo ba, 25 is is divided to 5? Um, yung, yung sinasabi po sa nung isa investigation po namin, di ba po meron po kong 4 distinct na integers? Yeah. Kunwari po, Yung set is 1, 2, 3, 4. Yes. Um, using yung permutation po, kukunin po natin lahat ng possible two-digit numbers na makukuha dun sa set na yon. Yes. Kunwari po, 1, 2, 3, 4. 12, 13, 14, 21, 23, 24. Add po yung lahat ng possible. Tapos? Tapos po, i-divide yung... Po nun, i- i- i-divide sa sum po ng 1, 2, tsaka 3, tsaka 4. I hope will, your teacher, your teachers will will not agree with that. <laughs> your teachers will not agree to that <laughs> because <laughs> August. Uh, I sir, <laughs> siguro po by the sample yata ang gusto ng imply ng bata malilang yeah. yung pyramid. <laughs> yon 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 Tama? Sige daw, sige daw. Salit, magsalita ka pa para makita mo ang correction. Sige. What do you mean by... Now, finally, what is your conjecture? Ah, uh, yun nga po, yung sa... Baka po may... Magkamali lang po siguro sa word. Pero yung... Yun po yung... What I mean po dun sa conjectures po namin na... Yun nga po yung combinations, yung sum. Yun po yung numerator. Ay, yun po yung dividend. Tapos yung sum po nung every element din po yung divisor tapos, tapos any combinations po mag po ng same answer yun po yung nakita po namin pattern sa investigation po correct 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 now this is now your your the theorem the uh, your conjecture will live forever will outlive yourself kailangan tama ang pagstate the con- your conjecture should have been if the sum of all distinct pos- uh, of four positive integers a b c d is divided by the sum so dapat denominator yung sum ng a plus b plus c plus d nako para galitan ka ng mga teachers mo niya at <laughs> kasi importante yon because Pag hindi mo siya isulat ng ganon, and I will read it, ang nas, ang, ang yung sum ng mga two-digit numbers, siya ang divisor. Kasi, is divided to the sum. Ibig sabihin, yun, dinivide mo sa sum ng A, B, A plus B. So, ang ibig sabihin, ang numerator will be the A plus B plus C plus D. Tama? So, yun yung... Kasi, kung basahin mo yun, yun ang ibig ko sabihin. Pero pagtingin ko doon sa mga examples yun ng maraming marami na isang conjecture sample in which is which you do not need, nakita ko, ah, nasa baba pala yung ano, A plus B. Yun ang pagkaintindi ko. So, ibig sabihin, mali yun. Now, in your proof, um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry, Val Masai, if this is what you are teaching, sorry pero hindi siya tinatanggap ng mga ganito. Hindi siya yung tipong hindi siya yung tipong 
i-equate mo sa kabila tapos may question mark ka lang tapos sa dulo equal to equal siya 33 is equal to 33 hindi siya hindi kasi siya logic pero bang madaya na logic kasi nga hindi mo pwede i- hindi mo pwede i-express na tipo bang of course sabihin mo na yes we cannot start we cannot start with what we want to prove that's the reason why you put question mark on the question mark above the equality sign pero ano siya yung tipo bang madaya na logic so pasensya pero i think we, we need to check that hindi dapat ganito magpresent ng proof dapat bakit na lang kasi eh, 33 din naman pala sa dulo bakit mo kasi lalagyan ng question mark equals 33 edi eh, compute na compute mo na lang tong kabilang side hanggang sa ma-reduce ng ganyan hanggang sa ma-reduce equal to 33 pareho din lang naman yun. pero never start with something na equal na siya tapos may question mark lang finally you, I Peter. want to, to yeah I want to group 2 to group 2 um Um, sa group uh, at sana nung ba yun analyze yung look uh, wait lang uh, when you mention about this um I group two. Are you still here? A, a group two, ba? Tama group two. Hi, hi. This one. Y- you mentioned about. I, I I was hearing when I while you were talking, while you were talking, while you were presenting. You mentioned that this is mathematical induction. Yes, sir. It is not. I think you, your teachers can argue it's not. It's, a, it's not an induction. It's actually a direct proof. Hey, sinabi mo lang naman na ito to, in, in, in multiply minus 2 more, factorable sub n plus 2. Actually, you, um, for teachers teaching in grade 8, you, you can actually share this one. Because this is factoring. This is factoring. Hindi siya induction. Nagulat ako sa ko, tama ba ang pagkarigil ko induction? It's not an induction. Uh, induction is different. I'm not sure with, um, when are you going to teach induction. Maybe in your problem solving uh, class. Uh, this is not induction. This is what we call direct proof. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Can I just have uh, a five minute anong pa lang? Uh, ano ba yun? Hiding time. Five minute lang. Five minutes lang. Sir, meron pa lang. May iba po ako. Uh, yung mga na-identify ni Sir Garces na mga, yung mga comments niya, may mga basic kasi na comments, di ba? Ang kakatuwa eh, lahat nakita eh. <laughs> uh, siguro from the start ng grade 7 pa lang, nang orient na natin yung mga parang na, sig, baka lang na hindi lang na ano ng mga bata, kamukha nung reverse digits. Sana mula umpista pa lang no grade 7 ng grade 8, no? Grade 8 at tayo, na-emphasize na doon sa bata. Bakit uh, hindi niya nila napansin, no? na siguro bi, ano natin yung mga samples natin uh, yun yung mga ganong pangparaniwang ano yung pagsusulat ng horizontal iba dapat pa vertical yun na uh, hi, hi, yun nga yung hindi siya ini-equate agad mabuti mas maganda pa kung dinadrive mo or darating ka doon sa ano part na equal doon siguro yun yung mga basic uh, mali ng mga bata or ano, uh, pagkakamali na dapat natin bigyan pansin. Ano po? Yes, ma'am. Um, ganda nung ano, na, 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 si Sir. Ano, ng, ganda. <laughs> Anyway, magsalita lang ako for the sake of the 
kasi nire-record nyo to at saka makikita, no, makikita ito sa iba perhaps. Okay? Now, ah, uh, Ang science kasi ngayon, ang science, especially the science schools, ang DepEd medyo may mga plano na sila, may mga pl- may may kinakausap. Well, I'm not I'm not sh- saying na ako 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 ako. Pero uh, medyo mat- medyo matanda na kasi ako sa DepEd. So mukhang uh, I know them, I know them well, I know you well. So meron sila mga project na uh, kinakausap ako especially the one with the science science curriculum na hanggang ngayon ay drawing pa lang Nandiyan, actually nandyan na siya kaya lang talaga naabutan lang talaga tayo ng pande- pandemic nandun na siya di ba Marilino? actually uh, actually malapit na talaga yon as in malapit na talaga yon bigla na lang na actually may plano na kami na magkaroon ng training sa uh, Ateneo noong August sana tapos may July ba yun? July tapos may planning noong noong April May na nawala ang lahat tapos nahirapan na sila ngayong ibalik pero meron silang mga ready na mga may mga training na si Miss Melanie Uh, unida ba yun? Okay. Tapos, yung TEC din, meron ding plano. I think, I'm not sure kung naimbitado kayo on February 10. Merong webinar on February 10. Baka, ako, baka patay ako nito. Sinabi ko yun. Dapat sila magsabi. That webinar is about mathematical investigation, problem solving, and mathematical modeling. Okay. So, hindi ko alam kung paano anong gagawin doon. February 10. Actually, dapat ngayon yung 8, ngayon 21 yon pinostpone ng February. So, technically, uh, ang basic education, the students must have five skills. Ito talaga yon Since 1990s, ito yung sinasabi. One is numeracy. That means, pupils and students must know how to compute. Exactly that. The next skill is actually uh, proving. Uh, it, it is it is improving that students are able to think logically at mapakita natin yon. That's the reason why meron tayong axiomatic sa uh, uh, I think grade 7 ba yon? Axiomatics, no? Yung axioms. Yung mga ano ibig sabihin ng ano ibig sabihin ng uh, I put at, at postulate, mga gano'n. Hang, tapos, nagpo-prove tayo sa mga, sa geometry, for example. Pero kasi, ang ating common is sa geometry tayo nagpo-prove. Pero actually, we prove also in algebra. Because, hinuhon natin yung skills ng bata paano mag-prove. Okay, kasi, para, para bang, hindi lang basta-basta lang na gaya kanina, yung minimality paano ba i-prove ang minimum paano ba i- pa- pagsabihin kung ganito paano ba to i-prove yung ganon so because that's one of the skills para hindi tayo magpapaniwala basta-basta kung walang proof the next skill the next skill is actually problem solving isa yan kaya palaging mayroong naka uh, para bang naka cling doon sa maat na palaging may problem solving. Yung pag uh, problem solving means uh, techniques na para bang how to how to be pagkama paraan employed in math. Although although may sinasabi na problem solving is a systematic way but pag kahit anong mangyari sa systematic way of solving problems ganon ganon pag ikaw naman ay wala kang nakita na paano gawin na talagang magtambing-tambling ang systematic mo. Okay? Pero kung trained ka kasi sa problem solving, you will be more systematic. Yung hindi ka basta-basta mataranta, yung tipo bang ganun. Uh, that's why, that's why never, 
never argue with your teachers that some of some of the teachers are giving a little bit higher or maybe deeper mathematical problems it is because you will be trained you are trained na to deal with difficult problems yun yung idea doon hindi lahat naman ng problema madali okay so if you are used to more thinking mas mas ano ka mas mas accepting ka doon sa kung ano man yung problema na hindi ka matataranta so that's the third one the fourth one is more on uh, more on the mathematician side the pure mathematician side because um ma, ma, ma people do research the forerunner to research is actually mathematical investigation na marunong ka mag-explore, marunong kang marunong kang mag-isip kung ano ang magandang direction. So, that is being honed in mathematical investigation. Kaya napaka-importante sa mathematical investigation ang exploration. So, I think you have experienced already na Right at the start, right at the start, you only have few ideas. But later, after after some explorations, you will see, oh, nga, no, maganda ito kung ga- gawin natin ito. Okay. So that's the idea of mathematical investigation. Parang ano yan? Eh, sir, wala naman yun. Hindi naman yun magagamit, no? Ibig lang sabihin nun na alam mo kung ano ang mangyayari ahead. All right? Wala naman itong, for example, yung computers nowadays. Ideas lang naman ni Turing yan dati. Wala naman siyang computer na meron na tayong Zoom ngayon. Wala naman siyang ganyan. Pero idea niya, idea niya yon na mag- magagawa at magagawa yon. Pwede yon gawin. Na ang isang, ang isang machine can actually have memory. So, ang isang machine can, can have a memory. So, idea lang niya yon. Pero ano ngayon, ginagamit na natin. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, ito yung mga ideas ba na although numerical ang dating, umpisa pa kasi yun. Kasi, hindi ka naman maka-observe kung hindi ka sanay mag-observe. Para lang yung chismosa. Kung hindi ka sanay chis- maging chismosa, hindi ka, yung chismis mo napakababaw. Pero yung, kung sanay ka maging chismosa, ang, imo, ang iyong bang, lumaba, lumalabas sa bibig mo, medyo malalim-lalim na. Oh, di ba? Tapos ang ang kung chismis, 'yun lang yung pang back, back door na ganun pero pag medyo malalim na ang tawag na ay ang tawag na ay conspir, uh, conspiracy theory. Yung mga ganun, di ba? Di ba? O so ngayon conspiracy theory. Chismis lang naman 'yan. Hinala hinala lang naman 'yan pero ginawa lang mag, magandang word, conspiracy theory, di ba? The fifth one is mathematical modeling. I, I think I don't have to explain that more kasi ginagamit yan ngayon. Pero kasi ngayon, yung mga ginagamit about uh, mod, minomodel daw ang, ang spread ng COVID-19, ganun. those are difficult models already. Pero of course, we will start with simple models. You cannot really go to, deeper, to, to a more elaborate investigation or modeling if you do not know the basic ones. Kaya, itong tatlo, problem solving, mathematical investigation, and mathematical modeling, gusto ng, gusto ng DepEd na i-impart ito sa schools. Now, I think uh, Marilyn mentioned as well na meron tayong mga competitions outside. Actually, isa ito sa mga isa, it, isa iyan sa para bang future ng mathematical investigation and mathematical modeling. Isa yan. So, pero mag- kagaya ng kagaya ng kagaya ng International Mathematical Olympiad, hindi naman tayo nananalo-nalo niyan dati kasi hindi tayo sanay. Pero ngayon, tingnan nyo, o oh, diba? Medal-medal na. Simple-simple na. Ang mini, hindi na pwede na walang silver ang bawat representation. Bawal nang hindi pwede. Dati, dati just ko halo, kahit bronze lang nagma, 
nagmamakaawa tayo paano makuha. Pero ngayon, it's, it's very easy to get a bronze medal, even a silver medal. Kasi nga, nasanay na. So, ganun din ang mangyayari. Right at the start, maybe, our competition on math investigation and mathematical modeling, ayun, dati daw meron yan. Dati daw meron yan. Kasama yan sa Intel. Kaya lang, it was, it was slashed because ang ending sa mga math kasi ng mga papers, puro na lang Fibonacci sequence. So, yung mga ganyan, ha, iwasan nyo na yan. Yung mga... Patterns in Pascal's Triangle. Mga ganyan, wag na yan. Mga gas, 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 gas na masyado yan. So, wag nyo nang gawin yan. Kasi yan yung dahilan kung bakit tayo tinanggal sa Intel sa Philippines. Kasi nga, ang puro, ang puro nag-submit patterns, patterns in, patterns in Pascal's Triangle. More properties of Fibonacci numbers. My God. Wala na yon, Wala na yan. So, anyway, Uh, about mathematical investigation. Um, so anyway, I'll talk about mathematical investigation. A mathematical investigation actually is nagista ako na is a divergent work. Divergent work. Ano ibig sabihin ng divergent work? Kung baga, kung magtatrabaho ka ng math investigation, kailangan it will open to different directions. Okay. So, bawal sa math investigation yung mag-solve ng problem tapos end na doon, putol na. That's the reason why if you are going to judge or if you're going to if you're going to um, advise a mathematical investigatory project, ang una mong tanong talaga is ano ang mga directions na pupuntahan. Kung ang ending ay mag-derive lang ng formula, no-no yon. It's a no-no. Kailangan, it will open to a lot of different directions. Kaya napapansin nyo ang palagi kong tanong, saan to papunta? Ano ang pwede gawin? So, in other words, this is really different from problem solving. Kasi ang problem solving, It's actually convergent activity. Convergent. Ibig sabihin, may problema ka, sinolve mo, tapos na usapan. That's problem solving. So, ang investigation, it will open to directions. Ang, ang problem solving, focus on one problem. So, done. Pencils done. Down. But in investigation, you have to explore more. In fact, in fact, in an investigation, you will start with no problem at all, but just an idea. In problem solving, you you will start with a problem. So yung kanina, yung halimbawa, yung tibo bang, ano kaya ang mangyayari kung i-rearrange natin yung numbers, tapos i-subtract natin yung kanyang reverse, tapos ano kaya, ulit-ulit natin gagawin yon yung, yung ganun na mga idea. Pero wala kang, wala kang sinasabi na, wala kang sinasabi na prove that this number will end to zero. If you, no, walang ganun. Walang ganun. That's problem solving. Pero pag sabihin mo na, ano kaya mangyari kung ganito, 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 ah, meron mga numbers, meron, wala. Ano kaya yung mga numbers na yon So, In, in, in investigation, you will have lo- lots, lots of questions than answers. While in mathematical, in problem solving, you will have problem right at the start. So, ang importante, although both will need exploration. Kasi, in problem solving, you will, to solve a problem, you need to explore. Hindi ba, tingnan mo yung mga maliliit na kaso, yung para ma-solve mo ang kabuuan, pero may problema. But in both in both in both activities, you will have exploration. Okay. I will not talk about mathematical modeling kasi iba yung linya na yun. Okay. Now, kailangan in as you go along in the per, in, in an MI project, kailangan malinaw ano ang object ano ang ano ang gagawin malinaw right at the start yon okay now 
Tapos tingnan mo kung ano na ang nagawa. Never do. I, I hope in your in your uh, in your investigate investiga- investigation uh, ano ba yon? Workshop ba yon sa inyo? Si hindi naman si, nag-workshop ba kayo nito? Kailangan turuan natin ang mga bata or tayo mga teachers na huwag mangopya. Kung ano lang yung kung anong idea na halimbawa, you work on this and someone has worked on this in the past, then do not copy. Make sure that you 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 know what they're doing. But you work on something that they have not done. But please, this is about research ethics. Wag mong gawin, wag mong gawin na kailangan pag may, may gagawin ka halimbawa, may idea ka na i-reverse kaya natin yung ano, mag, minus 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 and so on. Or the or the tic-tac-toe thing. Ginawa na ba to dati? Yung mga ganun na mga ideas. But never, never, kasi nowadays, nowadays, in, hindi na ito totoo. Hindi kagaya dati. Na remember, if you have, if you learn calculus now, there were two, there were two people, there were two people being uh, being uploaded for calculus, uh, Leibniz and Newton. Sabi, independent daw nila nagawa yun. Oo, at that time, they can do independent work because wala naman. Wala namang, di naman alam kung anong ginawa ng ano. So, I think you have, you have uh, as a side comment, you knew that Newton discovered calculus during a pandemic. Okay? So, nung time na na luma- pumasok sa idea ni Newton yung calculus, time yon na may pandemic sa London din. They were they were out of school for almost two years, just like now. So, huwag nyo isipin na ito ay ngayon lang. Hindi nangyari na rin ito. Kaya lang si Newton, I hope you are like Newton, wherein Newton spent his spent his pandemic days very fruitfully ginawa niyo ba baka naman kung ano nang ginagawa niyo sa pandemic ha so si Newton magkaroon ng law of gravitation and everything now um next is that conjectures conjectures should come after exploration Kaya na, 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 nalito ako doon sa inyong ginawa, sa ginawa ng mga bata, na, well, totoo yon. Right at the start, you will state your conjectures, right? Pero once you're going to restate your conjecture, hindi yung, di ba sabi niyo, verification, di ba? Verification. Dapat doon sa verification na stage, huwag niyong unaha, huwag niyong iuna yung, just yung conjecture. Dapat, na una yung mga examples at saka mga examples paka saka yung saka yung uh, conjecture kasi ang nangyari in most in almost all ang nangyari conjecture verification ito yung mga examples wag balik ta rin nyo kasi conjectures should follow from examples so i'm sorry for earlier moving on thank you very much dr garces for sharing your expertise and let me share my screen first. Yung results na ba ito? Wow. Hindi pa po. <laughs> uh, wow. To award the certificate yun. of appreciation, may introduce Miss Irene Imperial, grade 10 mathematics teacher. Miss Mom Irene. Okay, may I read the content of the certificate? Um, Republic of the Philippines, Department of Education, National Capital Region, Division of City Schools, Valenzuela, Valenzuela City School of Mathematics and Science, Certificate of Appreciation is hereby given to Dr. Ian June L. Garces for serving as a judge during the Mathematics Month Mathematical Investigation Conference Kung Final Defense given this 18th day of January 2021 at Venezuela City School of Mathematics and Science, signed by our Math Coordinator Master Teacher 2, Augusto V. Logroño, our Mathematics Lab Advisor, Mr. Romeo M. Miklat, and our principal, uh, school principal, Mr. Jaime S. De Vera, Jr. Thank you, thank you Dr. Garces. Thank you. Thank you, Pado. Thank you so much, sir. 
Thank you, sir. And finally, may I call on our Mathematics Club advisor, Mr. Romeo Miklat, to give us a closing remark. Finally, <laughs> magandang hapon po sa lahat. It's been a long day. The continuous search for knowledge and discoveries to understand things by providing reasons and explanations, to give stepping stones for future studies and researches, are the essence why our institution, the Valenzuela City School of Mathematics and Science, pioneered the mathematics investigation for endeavor. Since we started this project, young mathematicians of our school have shown us how vast the world of numbers really is and how useful every find can be in our society and in education. The course our country is traversing in this time of pandemic is guided by accuracy dependent on numbers. Every decision is based on statistical data. Every information is presented in numerical format. They were made to make, these were made to make sure that data are clear, understandable, and simple. Mathematics made this possible. And I know that it will be that it will always be this way in the years to come. Numbers will always be the pillar in global decision making. To our dearest Dr. Ian Garces, we are very honored to have you taught this afternoon. Maraming maraming salamat. To our participants and mentors, my sincerest congratulations. All of us are winners. Continue building a strong foundation for our future generation. To our school administration, my dearest, my dearest faculty members, thank you for the support. Marami pong salamat. And of course, to our beloved club officers, from our representatives, to our president, thank you so much sa mga sleepless nights, sa mga endless pangungulit ko sa anumang oras ng araw at panahon. Salamat sa pagsagot, salamat sa pasensya, at itutuloy pa natin ito for, for we still have two more weeks of our math month. Again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for the undying support and respect. May we all be safe, healthy, and may God be with us. Thank you very much, Sir Romeo. And that concludes our conference. We'd like to thank Dr. Garces for teaching us his methods and sharing his expertise. We also give our thanks to the students who put their time and effort in making these wonderful investigations. The winners will be awarded at the culminating event. Have a good day, and again, thank you very much. Next up is our Mathematics Month culminating event, so stay tuned. Welcome.